here we have uh, a very imposing memorial to the Tasmanian participation in, in the Boer War. It's a rather remarkable memorial, particularly with the uh, bronze soldier on top. That was, uh, the sculpture was uh, done by a man called Ben Shepherd. And you notice the pose of the soldier. He's looking towards the wharf area. And that's so he can see the ships go and return with the troops. But the pose, the way he's standing is important as well. Because the sculptor, Ben Shepherd, was in Italy. And he was in, very impressed with Michelangelo's David. So he imitated the stance of the soldier up there. And also too, it was so impressive, there's a replica of the exact memorial in Halifax, Yorkshire. This, of course, was first. On the side panel there, we have the name of 32 Tasmanians who died. Actually, 42 died. But nonetheless, we have 32 Tasmanians. On the other side, we have the name of and list of all the regiments that went. 850 Tasmanians went, 850 horses, and a number of Tasmanian uh, nurses. Overall, 600 Australians died in the Boer War, making it the third largest conflict that Australia has participated in outside the two world wars. You'll see here, of this memorial, granite stone at the base. It was unveiled in 1901. At that time, 16 Tasmanians had died. It was unveiled when the, the Duke of Cornwall and York visited it, and uh, he was the, uh, had the privilege of unveiling the memorial. It was done by public subscription, and obviously the um, bronze uh, statue on the top was added later. Now who was the model? Well there's three claimants, two of them being Morrisby, Frank Morrisby, who actually died in the war, and his cousin, another Morrisby. There's also a, a trooper weeding is believed could have been the memorial, so we don't really know, but there are several claimants. The helmet on the memorial is perhaps misleading. Australians, as far as I know, never wore that a hat, uh, that helmet, they had their own uniform. But nonetheless, everything else is right. And it's a wonderful, sterling achievement of early Hobart to have such an impressive memorial in dedication to what I describe as the Forgotten War. Commonly called the Boer War, it should be more correctly termed the Second Anglo War. This war, which was raged from October the 11th, 1899, until May 31st, 1902, was a major conflict in that a total of 450,000 British forces, including colonials, fought a total of excess of 87,000 Boers. Australia's effort was massive in relation to our small population. In excess of 16,000 troops left our shores. Many re-enlisted. In total, up to 23,000 Australians. 857 Tasmanians, made up of 36 officers and 821 other ranks served. About 880 horses also left Tasmania. Tasmania has 40 known sons buried in South Africa. Those who died as a direct result of the war, either because of the bullet disease and suicide. Another two died on the way home across the Indian Ocean, on the transport Drayton Grange, taking the death total to 42. Today, numerous memorials are scattered throughout Tasmania, testifying to our involvement and paying homage to those who served and those who died. Most are possibly forgotten. Perhaps they have been considered a quaint reminder of some war most Tasmanians have little knowledge of, with these memorials overshadowed by later major conflicts. In many ways, a study of the war can be seen to have similarities to the Vietnam War. Yet the amount of time it lasted, there were more Australian casualties in the Boer War than the latter nasty war. We now know the psychological after-effects, something which wasn't recognised until the Second World War and not totally developed until after Vietnam. 
The number of suicides by those Australians who served in the Boer War is not known, yet there were those who took their lives during and after the war. The Boer War saw the best he could, perhaps with the help of his family, repair, friends and family doctor or ministers of religion, but little else. They were even denied repatriation help. It was not until the 1950s the federal government considered veterans eligible for such benefits. By then, a large proportion were dead or beyond help. The war was declared 11th of October 1899. The following days, the Boers invaded the province of Natal, and it has to be said, looting and pillaging, annexing great, great tracts of land and renaming towns took place. Somewhere between 21,000 and 30,000 Boers pushed their way from both the Orange Free State and the Transvaal. The storm had broken loose. On October the 14th, the first major engagement took place, with the Boers suffering heavy losses. At the turn of the last century, feeling for Britain and the Empire was very strong in Tasmania. We were linked to the Empire not merely by ties of government and history, but by race. Tasmanian and British patriotism usually went hand in hand. The Governor, Viscount Gormanston, expressed this when he exhorted the members of the Bushmen's contingent to acquit yourself in a manner once credible for this loyal colony and worthy of the best traditions of the British Army. Most of the Tasmanian troops were sent off to Alba Studios at 1669 Lisbeth Street, Hobart, to be photographed. To allow Tasmanian soldiers to fight overseas, the government passed an enabling act and there was a very competitive spirit between the colonies to be the first one to commit troops. Not all support of Britain, however. One was newspaper editor and hoped to be politician James Patton, who used his paper, The Clipper, as a venue for his views. Yet his counter-opinion was the exception and short-lived. Tasmania even considered at a later time to accept Boer prisoners, happy to receive the money from London for the purpose. But Melbourne, now the new capital of the fledging nation of Australia, decided against it. In 1899, the Federation referendum was held. This developed the feeling of a national pride, and Australia sought not only to equal, but to better the mother country in some fields. Our Australian national flag was first flown September 3rd, 1901. We were finally a nation. On October 10th, 1899, the Tasmanian Parliament expressed its loyalty and devotion to Her Majesty the Queen and its sympathy to with Her Majesty's Imperial Government, with the difficulties that had arisen in South Africa, and is of the opinion that Tasmania should equip and dispatch for service with Her Majesty's regular forces in South Africa. When Tasmania sent troops to South Africa, it instilled a great sense of pride. This was expressed in W. H. Dawson's poem, Tasmanian's Gift, composed and dedicated to the troops. Our first troop of 80 men of the 1st Tasmanian contingent, under the command of Captain Sinclair Cameron, left Tasmania October 27th, just a fortnight after the declaration of war. The contingent reached Cape Town on the 26th of November, disembarking the following day. Conditions of enrolment were 12 months or the duration of war. Payment was by the Imperial Government Commonwealth Treasurer's Authority. Married men were not enlisted. Men had to be able to ride and to shoot well. Qualifications for the 8th Battalion Australian Commonwealth Horse was height not less than 5 foot 3 inches and chest not less than 34 inches. Age not under 20 years. By this time, acceptances had changed a little. While single men were preferred, married men were allowed on the understanding that if killed or died from sickness, no separation allowance would be forthcoming. On June 1, 1902, peace was proclaimed in South Africa. A telegram was sent to Tasmanian Premier Lewis with the news that the representatives of the Boer forces in the field have accepted the terms of surrender by, offered by his Majesty's Government. After receiving the news, Mr Lewis dispatched this message. Upon the announcement of the declaration of peace, great rejoicing took place throughout Tasmania, consequent upon the receipt of the welcome news. There were banner headlines in the local newspaper with the heading, Peace Proclaimed. 
The cessation of war was met by firing of five guns from the Queen's Battery and from announcements posted at the newspaper office. Crowds thronged the streets of the city and a public meeting was called at the town hall attended by the Mayor and Premier, accompanied by musical bands. There was a further patriotic meeting in the evening. At 11.30 that morning, a Thanksgiving service was performed at St John's Goulburn Street and later at 4.30 at the town hall. St Joseph's and St Mary's Catholic, a solemn detoum, was sung with St Mary's school choir singing the national anthem. Celebrations were carried out all round the state, from Baghdad to Mathena, on to St Mary's, Richmond, Bothell, Strawn, in Norfolk, and no doubt elsewhere. In Launceston, there was general rejoicing in the streets. Children were granted a holiday, and most business stopped. Rejoicing continued into the evening. Upon return, the first contingent was met by thousands of people who flocked to the wharfs and the, to the domain. The vessel, Harleka Castle, was met by many VIPs, including the Premier, Mr Lewis, Minister of Defence, Mr Collins, and other dignitaries. The Premier briefly addressed the troops and welcomed them home. With the troops were two nursing sisters who had served in South Africa, Sisters Hutchinson and Wallace. The police were powerless to keep the crowds under control. The public thong, thronged forward, embracing and kissing the men. After a few minutes, the men were drawn up and marched to the parade ground where they paraded before the governor and his wife and the mayor. A riot nearly broke out when the excited gathering spilled over to the grass area reserved for the VIPs. The governor, the mayor and even the troops were pushed and shoved. Mounted troopers and police endeavoured to quell the swelling mass, but their efforts were unsuccessful. Several ladies fainted in confusion, and it was reported that the doctor, rather than going to their aid, took shelter elsewhere. Eventually common sense prevailed when it was decided to move the return troops on and march them into town. The streets of Hobart were shrouded in decorations. There were banners hanging from the places of business displaying such sentiments as Welcome to our boys. Welcome home Tasmanians. Tasmania's proud of her sons. A banquet followed in the old exhibition building on the domain, which is no longer there. Speeches were made and churches held Thanksgiving services. It was not long before the Tasmanian South African Return Soldiers Association was formed and continued in the South until October 10th. 1963, when the minute books declared the affairs of the association in the South be handed over to the Northern Branch. Sadly, but inevitably, the Northern Branch, thus the association, folded in 1969. The motto of the association was, keep green the memory of fallen camp comrades. Over the years, the memory has dim. Their memory, however, has been kept somewhat alive by several major monuments in Tasmania, especially the imposing one in Princess Park, Launceston, and the magnificent bronze statue of a soldier on the Hobart Queen's domain. The foundation of the Hobart One, which was first known as the Tasmanian Soldiers National Memorial, was laid on July the 4th, 1901, by His Royal Highness, the Duke of Cornwall in York. The Mercury reported it at the time. At the time, the state's death toll was but 16. During the royal visit, Trooper T. Fitzalan was presented with a medal, the brother to Trooper Albert Fitzalan, who was to die in the war. The site for the memorial was chosen, as it would be in view of all vessels entering the harbour and would overlook the review group, as well as being discernible from the lower end of Liverpool Street. The chairman of the memorial committee was Bernard Shaw, first cousin to English playwright George Bernard Shaw, and the architect was Alan Walker. The creator of this remarkable sculpture piece was Ben Shepherd Sr., who married Elsie Morrisby, sister to Bernard Morrisby, who died in the war. It is believed Bernard Morrisby may have been the model for the monument, or his brother Raymond Morrisby, who survived the war. There is also another contender for model recognition, that being Frederick Weeding, who worked at the time on Lieutenant Colonel Cameron's property in the Midlands. Benjamin, Ben Shepherd, who died in 1910, was London-born, who moved to Hobart, joining his sister 
and her schoolmaster husband at Bismarck, now Collinsvale. He won a commission for the moral, which he executed in London. He received great acclaim, both in Britain and in Australia. Undoubtedly, it was his masterpiece. A replica was later erected at Halifax, Yorkshire, England. In the cavity of the foundation stone was placed names of those comprising the Tasmanian contingents that went to South Africa. Also, newspapers containing the announcement of the following events. The first meeting held in conjunction with the memorial. Death of the Queen. Ascension of King Edward VII. Arrival of the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and York in Australia. And the names of the Executive Committee and others who took part in having the memorial erected. In part, the Duke's address said, Pride in race and country, adding, We are met together to do honour to our gallant brothers who had fallen in South Africa, and it is with great satisfaction I have laid the first stone of our national tribute to their memory. End of quote. The foundation stone was placed in position by the means of a pulley, and a further three huge granite stones were added to the base. The monument was described as a national monument, in that subscription for its erection came from all classes of people from Tasmania. The reason why the soldier statue is looking the direction that he does is because he watches the troops leaving and returning to and from our shores. The statue was sent to London for casting in bronze and exhibited there. The founder was Mrs Singer and Co of Somerset. While in Venice and Rome, Shepherd found inspiration Michelangelo's statue of David, hits the trooper's pose. The Times newspaper reported, He stands on the alert, his filled glasses in one hand and his rifle in the other, a fine type of young manhood of the colony who came forward so readily to help the mother country and the empire. The helmet figure, however, is not peculiarly Australian. The statue returned to Hobart on the SS Papineau in January 1905. The statue was obviously added after the unveiling of the memorial. Ben Shepherd won the design for the memorial out of 52 entrants, 16 of which came from Britain. 20 Guinness were given as a prize. Shepherd, as said, was born in London and died in Cape Town, South Africa, after leaving Tasmania for warmer climate because of his failing health. The Mercury newspaper described Shepherd as a promising young painter. 42 Tasmanians died from various causes during the war, and more than 600 Australians. Tasmania, in the modern era, was the first state to organise an annual Boer War Commemorative Day, which is held in Hobart on the first Sunday in June, and the third Sunday in Launceston.
Mm-hmm. <laughs>